Hey family, it's Coach Josh here again with a daily play and it's Tuesday, so you know what that means, Theology Tuesday, or Theological Tuesdays, whichever one rolls out the tongue best, but I hope you all are doing exceptional, so come on into this video, we're going to talk about something very important, we're going to talk about how to walk in step with God daily, again, how to walk in step with God daily, but before we get into our notes, you know what to do, go ahead and pause this video and go to my website, IamUnplugged.com forward slash worksheets and download today's uh, worksheet where you'll be able to get some activity to help really examine your walk as well as as you come into the video if you haven't already yet go ahead and subscribe hit the bell and for those who've been a part of my community go ahead and like comment and share i would love to uh, uh, uh serve you all i would love for you to be a part of my community i would love to get this video more traction so that we can help other people walk in step with god but let's get right into our notes and talking about how to walk in step with God daily. Before I get into my main thought, let me make sure I express the scripture that I'm going to hang on today. It's Ephesians 5, 15 through 17, which says, Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Now let's get into our main thought, and we'll break down this text pretty soon. The main thought is, in order to walk with, you have to walk away. In order to walk with God, you have to walk away from things. In order to walk in step with God, you have to walk away worthless things. Let's get to my talking points. So we're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about why, uh, what causes people to not walk with God and how to walk in step with God. What causes people not to walk with God and how to walk in step with God. Let's get to the problem. Many people are either walking behind God due to fear or walking beyond him due to fantasy, but few are walking faithfully with him. The problem when it comes to walking with God daily and walking in step with him is that many people are either walking behind God due to fear and insecurities or walking beyond him due to fantasy and interest, but few are walking faithfully and in step with him. It's unfortunate how many people boast online that they walk with God, but don't walk with him offline. It's cute and cuddly and nice to see and nice to uh, 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 understand uh, 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 or see people say online that, yo, I'm walking with God, or they give the glimpse they're walking with God, but none of us are flies that follows them on the path to see, are they truly walking with God? It's very important that you walk in step with God, that you understand the beauty of purpose and person. In order for me to walk in purpose, I got to walk with person. Many people get so caught up in, I want to find my pur purpose. I want to walk in purpose. I want to walk in my calling. But you can't do that unless you walk with the person of God and grow in the character of God in order to really embrace the full capacity of what he created you to do in his life. So my question to you is, where are you? In regards to walking with God, are you behind him because you're afraid or are you behind him because of laziness or are you beyond him because of fantasy and interest and selfish ambition? It is all is your responsibility and it's for your reward to walk in rhythm with God, to be in step with God, to learn what it means to flow with him. Many people are either walking behind God due to fear or walking beyond him due to fantasy, but few are walking faithfully with him. Let's keep going. What causes people to walk behind or beyond God? Let's talk about that. What causes people to walk behind or beyond God? And I spelled the word walk. Number one is worry. What causes people to walk behind God and walk beyond God is worry. They don't trust him. They're worrying. They worry too much. They don't believe that God will take care of them. They believe that they are capable and strong enough to take care of themselves. But you're not. You need God. And God is the wisest one above all, above all man's wisdom. And when you understand it, you will say, God, I'm walking walking with you. I'm not going to worry about the valley that I'm walking through. I'm just glad you're walking with me. I'm not going to worry about the wilderness that I'm in. I'm glad you're walking with me and that I'm walking with you. It doesn't matter where you walk with God, you guaranteed to win. So you got to look within and say, you know what? I got to get this stuff out of me that's making me worried. And when you get so caught up in trusting in your idols and trusting in your own desires, when those things fail you, which they will, you're going to start worrying and start trying to uh, uh, gather more things and try to make things happen. Happen, but you got to say, I'm not going to worry about a thing. I never seen a bird worry. I never seen anything out in nature worry about anything because things are provided for them. 
So what causes people to walk behind God and walk beyond him? They're worried. Number two, associates. What causes people to walk behind or beyond God? Wrong associations. Who are you walking with? Who's your crew? Birds of a feather flock together. Who are you around? Sometimes your associates can gas you up. Be very careful who put gas in your tank. Be very careful who's trying to gas you up and you know you don't have the ability to drive. And for those out there, man, don't gas up people that's not licensed to drive. You got to make sure that you really say, you know what? Am I a good associate? Am I a good accountability partner? Because sometimes when you got the wrong friends, they'll gas you up and you'll speed beyond God or they'll, they'll, they'll wilt on you under the pressure of their of their perspective and all of a sudden now you walking behind God because now God told you to pursue that business God told you to create that thing God told you to do great things but because you're around the wrong people and they don't want you to progress they put toxins in your mind they plant toxic seeds in your mind that cause you to slow down in your pace I don't care what they got to say what did God say and do not allow people to gas you up, to go beyond God, nor do you let people uh, grind out of you the joy that God has given you to go after your purpose. What causes people to walk behind or beyond God? L, walking behind God. This is the one that's walking behind laziness. Laziness and procrastination. Laziness is one of those things that cause you to walk behind God. God wants people that work hard, that work smart, that knows how to work and afraid to work. The first thing he told Adam and him is tend. Tend. He said, tend the garden, work it. He gave him an assignment. He gave them work to do. He gave before he gave Adam his wife, he gave him a job. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So that should let you know, fellas, before you start looking for a wife, before you try to find a wife, find a job, find your purpose, find a career and, and, and be successful at it. You see what I'm saying? So you got to understand you cannot be lazy and walking in step with God because you got to be conditioned. You got to have a work ethic in order to win. And people think just because they made it into the kingdom of God, they're God's son and God's daughter, that God's supposed to just uh, uh, wash upon them all types of blessings, man. Get out of here with that. We got to be people that say, I'm going to work, God. Not working for his love, not working for his forgiveness, but be inspired to work, to be effective, to be able to rightly divide, to be a workman that's, that's created for a great purpose, to prove to people. People that God worked on my life and I'm a master of my craft. You can't be lazy and walking in step with God. What causes people to walk behind or beyond God? K, they're puffed up with knowledge. Puffed up with knowledge. They think they know it all. That's what causes people to walk ahead of God. I don't need God. I'm smarter than God. Man, you fool. We fools for thinking that we smarter than God. We ain't smarter than the OG. And we got to get to a place where we say, you know what, man? God knows best because he's seated the highest. He who sits the highest see the fathers. And you got to trust his viewpoint. And we got to say, you know what? What I know is what I know. But in order for me to know what I need to know, I got to go to the one who knows it all. And that's God. What causes people to walk behind or beyond God? W, worry, A, associations, L, laziness, K, being puffed up with knowledge. But, uh, next point here, it says, the goal is not to walk in purpose, but to walk with person. You heard me say that before. The goal is not to walk in purpose, but to walk with person. If you walk with if you walk with the person, you will always be walking in purpose. That's what it means. That if I'm walking with God, I'm enjoying the journey and I'm with him, man, then man, I will always find myself in purpose. The Bible says, look carefully then at how you walk. Not as unwise, but as wise. That's very important. You all of us got to look carefully how we're walking. Your walk is not in your strut. Your walk is in your character. How do you carry yourself? What confidence? Where do you get your confidence from? You know what I'm saying? Where do you get your creativity from? That's what walking is, that I'm walking in his likeness. See, we're walking in his image. We all can have the ability to walk for those who are able to walk. But he wants to know, can you walk in my likeness? The more you walk with the person, the more you become like him. See, we created it in his image, but are we created in, are we recreated in back into his likeness? So the Bible says, look carefully, examine thoroughly, look carefully then in how you carry yourself. Look carefully because people are watching. People are observing. God, God cares about how you carry yourself. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, saying that there's two types of ways to walk. There's an unwise way and there's a wise way. But in order to do that, uh, 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 you got to look carefully at how you walk. Let's keep going. It says, verse 16, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. If there's any other time in history that you should examine your walk with God, examine where you are with God to slow yourself down, to get back to where he was. Because one thing about God, God ain't going to chase you. 
God going to still keep his pace. You either going to turn around and catch up with him, uh, get back with him, or you're going to kind of gather yourself up and go towards him. But God is going to keep his pace because he got, he's working, he's doing, he's getting things done. He, he's walking with people and making sure they're working and, and being successful. Making the best use of time. Man, these days are evil. You don't know how much long you're going to have these freedoms. You don't know how much long you're going to have for these freedoms. You saw with the quarantine. We don't know what the next phase is going to be. We don't know what it's going to be like two years, 10 years from now. And so you got to make the best use of the time before you stripped of your liberties, before you stripped of what you could or couldn't have done when liberties were, 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 were available. Making the best use of the time because of the days are evil. Verse 17, therefore, do not be foolish. Be wise. And understand what the will of the Lord is. The number one thing that you should be seeking to fully understand about your life is, God, what is the will of it? What's your will for it? God, where, where are we going? I'm with you in step. Now, let's talk about how to walk in step with God, in rhythm with God, in pace with God. Where if God says walk, we walk. We walk in step. When God want to sprint, we out on that break. We out. God, go, I'm out. You see what I'm saying? If God wants to jog, we got a nice little jog going. If God wants to just sit here in this season for about two years, you sit there in that season for two years. That's what it means. Now, how do we walk in step with God? W-A-L-K. W, walk away from worthless things, including your will. In order to walk in step with God, you got to walk away from certain things. You got to say, you know what? I got to walk away from this mindset. I got to walk away from these people. I got to walk away from these influence. I got to walk away, even my own will, because I realize walking in my own will only puts me at a certain place of success. But in order for me to really be successful, I got to walk in God because God knows what purpose is. So you can make a, you can make a lot of plans and make a lot of money from those plans. But if you want to make impact, eternal impact, earthly impact, and boost up your heavenly account, you got to walk in purpose. You see what I'm saying? So you got to walk away from worthless things. The Bible says, put put no worthless things before your eyes. You got to say, man, is there, what, am I, what do I have before my face? Like we said last week, we talked about be still before the Lord. My last week's purpose singleness video, we got to be still before him and say, you know what? I'm only going to keep before my eyes worthful things, not worthless things. And I'm willing to walk away from my own will. My life got better when I walked away from what I thought was best for me. A, how to walk in step with God? Acknowledge him more. That's right. Acknowledge him more. What are those areas that you do not talk to him about? A unwise person does things without talking to the wisest person. <laughs> a wise person says, you know what, God, what do you think about this? We're talking about decision making. We're not talking about going to the bathroom. You're capable to go to the bathroom. You're capable of brushing your teeth. You're capable of doing what you're capable of. But when it comes to even with capability, you got to make sure we're talking about capability in regards to the, the mundane, normal things of life. But when it comes to like decision making, like who to marry, where to go, where to live, uh, what to buy majorly. You see what I'm saying? You got to say, God, is this the will for me? I got to acknowledge you. God, or is this where we going? And when you acknowledge him, the Bible says he'll make your path straight. Thoroughly, how to walk in step with God. I love this point. Let him establish the pace. And be okay with the length of the journey. L, let him establish the pace. Let him. Let him establish the pace. If God said, we out, we running. You run with him. That's why it's important to be conditioned. And we out. All right, God, we running. Let's go. We, you want me to get there quickly? Quicker? We, we, we out. God, you want us to walk and enjoy the journey? Okay, we'll walk. God, if you want to jog just to kind of get my heart rate going and get me used to this path, then okay, we jog. God, if you want to sit here and look at some things right now, if you want me sit here for two years at this job so that I can see certain things that's going to set me up for my career, if you want me to sit here in this church, even though it may be whatever, whatever, to learn whatever I need to do to be positioned in who I need to be, cool. Wherever you want me to sit, if, we, if you're here, I'm here. I'm not going to get concerned. I'm not going to get upset. We hear. If you hear, we hear. Let him establish the pace and be okay with the length of the journey. You got to be okay with the length because life is a journey. Life is long, man. You got to be okay with it. You can't be that person like I have here. I says life is a long journey and it is so, so that you can burn off unnecessary calories. Some of the things you're going through is a long journey, man. You got to say, God, okay, we, we walking, we cool. 
However long, God, we're going to do this. We're going to be in this together because I know that I'm going to burn off unnecessary calories. 12 years ago in ministry, when I first started, you couldn't tell me that I wasn't going to be around the world. I, yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? In a year or so. You see what I'm You couldn't tell me. It told me that. But God, I was so glad God was like, <laughs> Josh, I got something for you. Because if I would have known back then that it would have took me 12 years to get where I'm at today, man, I would have been like, well, this ain't for me. I would have picked another degree. But God knew. That's why I'm so glad it took 12 years and more years counting. And I'm still not even around the world like that. You see what I'm saying? But what I'm saying is I'm glad he did not promote me until I wasn't first made the person to receive the promotion well. So what I'm saying is what you thought in the beginning, you forgot that it may take you 10 years to get there. But in those 10 years, you learn about yourself and we mean and begin to release unnecessary calories off of you so that you can be in prime shape. For whatever you need. Jesus was unknown for 18 years, probably getting in shape for three years of impactful ministry. You'll catch that on the way home. Next point. Are you a how long person or a however long person? You got to be okay with the journey. You cannot be a person with God that's like, God, how long am I going to be single? How long until I meet my husband? How long am I going to be my wife? That's annoying, man. When you're in a car with somebody and they keep pestering you about how long, it's kind of offensive that you care more about the destiny than the person who's driving. God wants you to be a person that cares more about the divine and who he is than, the do, than you do the destination. So you got to examine yourself. Am I a how much longer person or am I a however long person? Let's keep going. Last but not least, K, how to walk in step with God, get to know him. Get to know him personally. God is not a machine. He's a person. And many of us treat him like a machine, treat him transactionally. You see what I'm saying? We treat him like a transaction versus who he has tested, his, has proven himself to be. You got to get to know him in order to walk with God because I have here. You don't mind walking with someone when you truly know and appreciate them or him. Do you know him or do you just know about him? That's the difference. You're going to always walk ahead of God and behind God when you know just about him. But when you know him, you, I'm catching up with you, God. I want to be with you because you, man, you, you, you my best friend. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to slow down, man, because I know nothing. Because I want to know him. I tried, I thought I knew what I knew, but I did know. How to walk in step with God. Number one, W, you got to walk away from worthless things, including your will. Number two, A, you got to acknowledge him more. L, you got to let him establish the pace and be okay with the length of the journey. And K, you got to get to know him. I hope this message really inspired you um, to slow down or to catch up. Um, because God is walking and, and he's walking and he wants you to walk with him so that you can be like him. And so that you, when you walk into these positions of promotion, when you walk into these places of success, you will be able to represent him well because you are just like him. I got an activity for you that I really want you to process. I want you to take some time to carefully look at how you're how you're walking today and assess what changes, if any, do you need to make. Where are you in regards to walking with God? Are you behind, beyond, or in step, and why? What worthless things do you need to walk away from? And what areas do you need to acknowledge God more? What pace does God have you at now? And where are where where is your temperament or where are you temperament wise with the journey? Are you a however long person or a how long, uh, how long person? And what would you like to know about God? Take some time to really reflect on this and really see where you are because the days are evil, my friends. You got to be wise, not foolish. I love y'all. And like I always say, run to play wise. See you guys tomorrow on Wednesday. Y'all take care. Peace.